Fletch, BG, Lane, Kelsey. Quite an era of greatness that Eagles fans have been lucky enough to witness over the past 10 years. But as these players enter the final stages of their careers, we have a solid core of young players ready to grab the torch and lead this team through the next era of greatness. Josh Sweat's story is about as representative of Philly as you can get. Billed as the next Jadavion Clowney coming out of high school, a freak injury nearly left Sweat with one leg. But through grit, determination, and perseverance, he rose from defeat and exceeded those lofty expectations. Today, we will look at Josh Sweat and all the reasons why I believe he will help lead the way for the next generation of Eagles greats. Before getting into the technical aspects of Sweat's game, we should look at his overall body type and athletic ability. Sweat is tall at six foot four and long with arms measuring in the 86th percentile of all edge players measured. With a BMI below the league average for edge defenders, he is on the lighter side and doesn't have nearly as thick of a build as some of his counterparts around the league, but he makes up for that with elite athletic traits. He has elite bursts off the ball, long speed, and explosive ability. His 40 and vertical both ranked in the 96th percentile, while his broad jump ranked in the 88th percentile of all edge players tested. Sweat has great mobility, especially important for his height that allows him to be quick and agile and bend his body through different positions. For comparison, he has the body type and athletic ability of Kyle Pitts playing defensive end. Sweat made highlight reel plays in high school at tight end, and if he focused his efforts in that direction, I'm sure he still would have been an impact player in the league. You can see some of those skills at play in his pick six against the Cowboys last year. Sweat's athletic ability shows up all over his tape, and it starts with his get-off. According to NextGen stats, Josh was third in the NFL and get off among all players with five or more sacks last year. When you look at the film, you can see why. You can see Sweat's track background show up as you will regularly see him in a four-point stance that looks like it's ready for a track meet. I won't get into all of the specifics of a stance and get off in this breakdown, as I will save that for a future video. Just know that he has one of the best get offs in the league, and it sets up the rest of his pass rush game plan. You will often see Sweat in wide alignments to give himself better angles to take advantage of his burst off the line. He can consistently beat tackles around the edge just by using his acceleration and speed. In order to not get beat around the edge, tackles often take vertical pass sets, gaining depth quickly at the snap of the ball. This helps eliminate the angle that Sweat can take to the quarterback, but it opens up the tackle to bull rushes and inside counters. Giving so much space to Sweat allows him to convert speed to power and collapse the pocket. This is the NFL though, so Sweat is not always able to capture the edge just based on his insane get off. Josh has really developed his footwork and hand usage when attacking a lineman. To capture the edge, he has a bag of moves that he uses. He utilizes different long arms, stabs, chops, swipes, and rips, and often combines multiple moves together to win outside. This play against the Cardinals shows what I'm talking about. First, this is a beautiful get off. We love seeing this position with the first step. From the triple extension of the back leg, 45 degree forward body lean, and violent high pump of the arms. He doesn't extend too far forward with his front foot. Rather, it lands beneath his center of gravity so that he can drive off it powerfully. As he approaches a tackle, he stabs with his left arm, which draws the offensive lineman's hands out, which he chops down with his right, and finishes by ripping through with his left arm. The pressure forces Kyler Murray to step up, and he's flushed out of the pocket. Sweat's length is a weapon that he deploys constantly, flashing long arms and stabs to either bull rush or get tackles to flash your hands so he can knock them away. Here against the Steelers, he uses a stab to draw the hands and smoothly rip under. Notice how he prevents the tackle from recovering by ripping the hand through high. Excellent technique. We will come back to this play again later when discussing Sweat's ability to bend and corner. Sweat doesn't just use multiple techniques when hand fighting. He varies his approach with his feet as well. Mentioned before, but when a tackle vertical sets, they can be susceptible to inside counter moves. Though Josh doesn't use inside counters much, which, by the way, is something I would like to see him add to his game more regularly, he can use footwork to at least give the illusion that he will use an inside counter. Sweat loves using Euro steps and jab steps to set up his outside moves. By using either a Euro step or jab step, Josh can get the tackle to stop their feet on their pass set, which shortens the corner for him to get around. Here against the Vikings, notice a couple things. First, notice how the tackle reacts to Sweat's Euro step. 
He stops his vertical set in preparation for an inside counter. Then notice Sweat's Euro step. He fakes inside with his head and shoulders while he loads up on his left leg to spring himself outside of the tackle. He steps upfield with his right foot, then he steps back underneath himself with his left foot. This squares his hips with the quarterback so that he can flatten down the line and close. This is known as a step replace and is one of the ways that pass rushers can turn the corner at the top of their rush. Sweat combines all of this with a double swipe to clear the tackle's hands and shoulder. He is mere inches away from getting a strip sack, but the pressure forces a slightly misplaced ball, which the receiver cannot track and catch properly. Euro step and jab steps allow the pass rusher to use the perception of space to their advantage. By stepping into the lineman, the pass rusher can create the illusion that the space between the offensive lineman and defender is disappearing, which often causes the offensive lineman to shoot their hands. When the defender steps away, he leaves the offensive lineman's arms exposed. People have made careers off of the Eurostep cross chop, which is the move we see Sweat execute here. Eurosteps and jab steps don't always work to get the pass blocker to stop moving their feet, but it can mess with their punch timing and expose their chest. That's an easy opportunity for Sweat to convert to a single or double arm bull rush. What I love about Sweat is that he doesn't stop working even if his first pass rush move doesn't work. He consistently showed the ability to continue using secondary rush moves in pursuit of the quarterback. On this play against the Lions, the tackle does an excellent job playing with independent hands. He doesn't give Sweat his outside hand, instead drawing it back and punching with the inside hand. Sweat's cross shot misses, but instead of just getting washed up the field, he follows up with a two-hand swipe to knock the tackle's second punch away. This secondary effort allows him to get a hit on the quarterback. Sweat has a high motor when rushing the passer. He doesn't quit, and he got a few sacks the past year just based on effort and hustle alone. Here, the tackle disrupts Sweat's timing by using a jump set, but Sweat doesn't stop. He uses a forklift technique to rip the blocker's hands off of him and pursues. Again, we see a missed cross chop that immediately turns into a double swipe and rip to get a hit on the quarterback. This play is also a great illustration of Sweat's outstanding ability to bend at the top of the rush. Look at his body lean. This allows him to drop his center of gravity and turn the corner tightly. He's able to bend like this in large part due to elite ankle flexibility. This extreme bend in the ankle allows him to lower his center of gravity while keeping all of his cleats in the turf for support. Back to the play we looked at earlier against the Steelers, Sweat again showed off his great bend and ankle mobility, but this time he also displays his great core strength to not get knocked off his path. Not only is mobility important in bending around the corner, but so is good core strength. Last thing to note about this play, Sweat shows the other major footwork normally used to corner by using a step through. Contrary to the step replace technique that we saw earlier, where the pass rusher swings her hips around by stepping upfield with her outside foot and stepping back underneath himself with her trailing foot, the step through technique aims for the pass rusher to use their inside foot to step through first while the outside foot whips around to turn the corner. The goal is to get the inside toe to face the quarterback so that the hips turn to face the quarterback as well. Again, this requires great ankle mobility. Sweat's ability to bend is a solid pass rush move in itself when used at the right time. Andrew Thomas and Josh Sweat had a couple matchups this year, and Thomas had a tendency to use wide, looping outside punches and clamps. This serves to take away the outside hand that speed rushers like Sweat work to attack. To counter, Sweat would use simple dip and rip techniques to duck under Thomas' strikes. Josh shows off his closing burst that helps him rack up hits and sacks. Sweat is a smart pass rusher. He uses different sets of moves based on different types of pass blockers he faces. In addition to using level changing moves like the dip and rip and ghost techniques to counter Andrew Thomas' high strikes, he would also use a good amount of bull rushes. Thomas' use of wide, looping punches leaves his chest open, and Sweat is smart enough to take advantage. His bull rush of Thomas in the playoffs was the main cause of his sack as Daniel Jones tripped over Thomas' leg. Josh also shows the awareness to alter his pass rush game mid-game as well. Against Tyler Smith in week six, Sweat attempts to use a long arm. Smith realizes this and uses a snatch and trap technique, chopping Sweat's arm down, causing him to lose his balance. Sweat has a counter later in the game. Instead of using the long arm, he fakes a long arm to get Smith to draw his hands up, allowing Sweat to dip under the punch and flatten to the quarterback. 
Sweat is a crafty pass rusher. I know a lot of people keep saying Nolan Smith will learn a lot from Hassan Reddick, and he will, but Sweat has a lot of knowledge and insight that Nolan will learn from too. Last in regards to his pass rush is Sweat's effectiveness on stunts and line movement. His athletic ability really shows up when he's looping inside. His notable lateral agility and rapid acceleration allows him to knife into the backfield before pass blockers can react in time. He does a good job in his setup, selling upfield and giving the penetrator time to pick the tackle. He doesn't usually loop around too wide, instead staying tight to the hip of the guard as he loops inside. His bend and use of hands aid him as well. Sweat's athletic ability comes to light in the run game as well. His quick burst off the line allows him to be disruptive in the backfield. He's so fast on this play that the pulling guard has no chance to reach him. Sweat has a high football IQ, so he probably had some clue that the commanders were going to run this type of action toward him. Like in the past game, his lateral agility allows him to shoot into adjacent gaps before pass blockers realize what happened. When Josh plays with low pad level and fires out of his stance quickly, he can really get into the chest of run blockers and create some knockbacks. However, the biggest problem for Josh is he often plays with a high pad level in the run game. And combined with the fact that he is one of the more slender edge players, he can get moved off his spot against bigger tackles. What he does do well to counter this is use his length to his advantage. Sweat's long arms really allow him to create space so that he can shed and pursue the ball. He does a much better job when tight ends are trying to block him. In those matchups where the weight and strength advantage is neutralized, his long arms overwhelm blockers. In all cases, he does an excellent job to lock, peek, and shed. In pursuit, Sweat is relentless. His athleticism is on display when he has to chase down ball carriers from the backside. His closing speed is exemplary. His athleticism and football IQ are both on display when teams try to run reverses. His change of direction skills, acceleration, and long speed function to prevent big plays. They also help to slow down mobile quarterbacks as he can take away angles that most other ends cannot. He consistently takes good pursuit angles so that he can be in position to make tackles when needed. His change of direction skills allows him a greater range to pursue plays. Though his frame is a little lighter than typically desired in the run game, he makes up for it by using his athleticism to make and take away big plays. What really sets Josh apart is his mental toughness and competitive fire. As mentioned at the beginning, Sweat almost had his leg amputated due to a dislocated knee on a freak play in high school. At the time, he was ranked as the number one defensive end coming out of high school by several ranking systems. Most players would have taken the route of redshirting their freshman year to fully rehab the knee injury, but Sweat was determined to play his freshman year. He put in so much work that at one point, coaches called home to see if his parents could convince him to take it easier. But he started his freshman year. That's true determination. He is a guy that will accomplish what he sets his mind to. In high school, he taught himself how to throw the discus from YouTube videos and became a state champion. That's on top of being a sprinter. To this day, he builds computers from scratch. You can see his desire to learn and overcome challenges spill into his game, as we have seen how crafty and nuanced his skills are. Elite athleticism combined with a championship mindset creates superstars, and Josh Sweat is one in the making. He has gotten better every year of his career and is still only 26 years old. His story, full of challenges, grit, and determination, is fit for Philadelphia. To me, it's clear. Josh Sweat is next on the list of great Philadelphia Eagle lifers.